uh, when I was asked to give this talk, I, I, uh, I thought it would be appropriate to uh, take you back to the old days, because this is the 50th anniversary, and, um, and I haven't been around for, for 50 years, but I've been around for close to 50 years. So um, I found a lot of old stuff that I'd like to talk to you about to show you. Uh, first of all, uh, I think we, all of us, owe an incredible debt of gratitude to Jim Barnes. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, for those of you who, who are too young, uh, Jim Barnes was the division chief of the Time and Frequency Division in the 60s and 70s when all the work was done. And um, in those days, a division chief had a active research program, or could have an active research program. And, and Jim Barnes did an enormous amount of stuff himself and uh, encouraged all of us, including Dave Allen and everybody else, to do the same thing. And, and um, uh, my, my, my opinion then and now is that he really never got the credit he deserved. And I think that's most unfortunate. And part of the reason that I found this nice picture is I'd like to try and you know, fix, fix the problem, at least to some extent. Now, there were other people who, who made a lot of, who made a big contribution. Uh, and I couldn't find any pictures of them, at least no pictures of them from the old days. Uh, Helmut Helvig um, was at the time in the Time and Frequency Division. He later became uh, Deputy Director of, of MBS. <clears throat> Sam Stein, who's of course still around, um, was the division chief uh, for some time, and um, most of the most of the really the measurement system that we still use, and a lot of the computer stuff that we still use, really comes from the Sam Stein era. I think uh, I think all these people made uh, absolutely important contributions, and. Uh, it may be not quite true that it wouldn't have happened without them, but it happened much easier with them. They really, they really helped. Uh, then I found this old picture, which uh, those of you who know these people, uh, that's Mark Weiss, that's Trudy Pepler, that's of course Dave Allen, and that's Jim Gray. <clears throat> and uh, Trudy and Mark Weiss, uh, Mark is now retired, uh, Trudy is still there, Jim Gray is retired. All of these people made very significant operational contributions to the, to the operation of the time scale and the operation of the time and frequency division. And what you see behind you, which I'm going to show another slide of, that's the PDP-1170 that we had. Uh, and that's where we did most of the calculations, most of the time scale, most of everything that was done uh, was done on that system. And in fact, on, that is not the first system. Um, well, that's me, okay? That's the first system. And that, for those of you who don't know it, that's a PDP-8. And, uh, sorry? I'm sorry, what did you say? Yeah, and, well, and, and, um, and that's a teletype, which was a wondrous thing all by itself. Uh, and and um, when I first got into the time scale business, uh, that was the time scale, and it had 4,000 words of memory, and it was programmed with paper tape, and uh, that's a paper tape from the era, okay? Uh, that's what the system sort of looked like. Uh, it had nine-track tapes and so on. Uh, to give you a calibration point, these discs, this one, this one, and this one, you can kind of get a feeling for the size of them, and they were five megabytes each. And that was regarded as big disks in those days. Uh, that's a 256 megabyte disk. That's this thing here. It fit into a, a drive about the size of a modern washing machine. Um, and you can see all the platters. And to give you a scale, that's an 80 gigabyte disk that I took out of a computer. It's a kind of an old one now because you can get a lot bigger than 80 gigabytes, but you can see the, the, the difference in the scale. <clears throat> Now, in those days, um, we were playing around with Kalman filter averaging for NAT1, and that was an, that was an Allen variance calculation, 
that we played around with for a long time. And uh, I, I just want to remind, remind you of these kind of things because we were playing around with steered clocks based on rubidium. Uh, you can see EGGRB was a steered clock that was based on, we're going we're to use rubidium as the steered clock in AT1. We had uh, common gain to estimate the drift. Uh, these, are all, these are all calculations that were done based on Allen variance stuff of one sort or another. And uh, the, the clocks in those days were not all that wonderful. This was well before the 5071s, uh, or maybe just at the beginning of the 5071s. So we had 5060s and 5061s. I went back and looked at the first publication that I could find of the Allen variance in our, in our database. And it comes from 1966. And it's got the famous plot in it, which I, call, which I remind you about, the relationship between the slope of the Allen variance and the slope of the power spectrum, power spectral density. And that's, of course, a curve that we've shown over and over and over and over and over again. And as far as I can tell, it, was, it first appeared in 1966 in this paper. And uh, so that's what I've done is I wanted to bracket the, the time that we, the Allen variance time, so to speak. And so that's the beginning. And that's the middle. That was the publication of the modified Allen variance. Again, this is the first paper that I found about it. Uh, and this was at PTTI uh, in 1985, uh, where the idea of the Allen variance was introduced, the idea of the modified Allen variance was introduced for the first time, at least as far as, as, far as I know. Then this is the end, so to speak, the most recent uh, thing, identifying the noise type by the bias function. and. Uh, that was in 1987. I guess that's not the last one. Uh, I sort of, okay. There was application to, to, of the Allen variant to networks. Okay, so there it is. Allen's and Barnes, um, Allen's and Mark Weiss, and my own paper, uh, which appears in the special issue, uh, which is application of variance to networks which is something that I've worked on for a number of years. Those of you who may have looked through my old papers may find this kind of stuff. And so they, they, these are, this is the stuff that's been uh, bracket the 50 years that we're using for celebrating the Allen variance. <laughs> now, uh, the most recent paper, the one that, that, that David Allen and I have just written, uh, is again a uh, historical perspective and it's going to appear, or maybe by now it has appeared, in the special issue. Uh, the, sp the special issue, uh, which is the IEEE transactions on UFFC, uh, the special issue for the 50th anniversary of the Allen variance. That's, that's, that's a cover of the special issue. So I guess, I guess if this cover appears, it must be that special issue appears as well. OK, so let me, guess, let me just summarize. It's been a very productive 50 years. I think we have, we have done an enormous amount of stuff with the Allen variance, uh, both in ways that it was intended to, to be used in terms of clock statistics, in ways that were related to clock statistics like network statistics and channel time statistics, and uh, in ways that are very surprising, which may have nothing to do with time and, time and clocks at all. And, and uh, it's been a very versatile arrangement and part of the reason for, for that is that the, the non-convergent uh, power spectral stuff, 1 over f, 1 over f squared, that kind of stuff, uh, is very common in nature. It exists in a lot of different places. And uh, the result of that is that it's, it turns out to be a very useful thing, even in places where we didn't think it would ever be used. And I'm sure the next, the next 50 years will be equally exciting.